Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, the climate guy setting the record straight about climate. This video discusses indications that the climate swamp is starting to drain. France just announced that 13 climate scientists are leaving the U.S. and moving to France. One who particularly caught my attention was Alessandra Giannini of Columbia University. Giannini's research has conclusively demonstrated that the persistent drought which afflicted the Sahel region in the 1970s and 1980s could be tied to rising sea surface temperatures worldwide. Note the spectacular abuse of language by the Washington Post in this sentence. They say, conclusively demonstrated, and then down here say, could be. But I'm about to conclusively demonstrate that she's wrong. If we go back to December 29th, 1974, the New York Times said that drought in the Sahel was due to global cooling, not global warming. Some recent warnings from reputable researchers in Japan, Europe, and the U.S. have so worried policymakers that last January, certain scientists at a meeting of the National Academy of Sciences proposed the evacuation of some 6 million people from their parched homelands in the Sahel region of Africa. And this was due to a steady global cooling trend since World War II. And here's another article from the Los Angeles Times, July 25th, 1976. The Earth's climate has been cooling rapidly since the 1940s, and the increasingly unstable weather we have witnessed in the past few years is a symptom of this process. So back then, climate scientists blamed all bad weather on global cooling. Now they blame it on global warming. California is currently suffering through its driest period in more than a century. Well, now they blame California droughts on global warming. But 40 years ago, they blamed them on global cooling. And then down here, if the relatively benign climate, i.e. warm, which made such explosive growth possible changes for the worse, famine could follow. Thus, the massive drought-induced hunger, which took 400,000 lives in the Sahel and Ethiopia during the early 1970s, may be a foretaste of things to come if the Earth keeps cooling. Now let's fast forward to the global warming scare in 1999. This article in The Guardian, which is one of the top climate alarmist publications, says, The idea that the desert is spreading out remorselessly just isn't true. The scare stories about marching sand dunes have been quietly dropped and the UN has recently been shifting its stance. Old records suggest the Sahel droughts are nothing new. Severe droughts struck in the 1680s, 1740s, 1750s, 1820s, and 1830s. That was the Little Ice Age. Droughts are associated with cold, not heat. Yet we forget that the 1950s and 1960s, which were very warm, were a golden time for the Sahel, when rain fell in buckets and farmers moved north towards the Sahara encouraged by the fresh greenery. So warm weather produces rain, and cold weather produces droughts. And here's a more recent article from The Guardian. Global warming could end Sahara drought, says study. Global warming could significantly increase rainfall in Saharan Africa within a few decades, potentially ending the severe droughts that have devastated the region, a new study suggests. Global warming will lead to changes in air pressure and weather. When the Netherlands team simulated this effect and combined it with warming caused by the expected rises in greenhouse gas emissions between 1980 and 2080, they found Sahel rainfall in the July to September period jumped 1 to 2 millimeters per day. This is a map of the Sahel region in Africa. You can see it's sandwiched between the equatorial rainforest and the Sahara Desert to the north. Global warming theory says that the tropics will expand. That would shift the rainforest further north and make the Sahel region less prone to drought, not more prone to it. Giannini's life's research is proving that global warming produced the Sahel droughts of the 1970s, when in fact a 10-second search on Google demonstrates that she's completely wrong about that. But she plans to do an additional 15 to 20 years of research. I love my job, she wrote. But she said that over the past 15 to 20 years, it had already become harder to obtain federal funding. It took her 15 to 20 years to do her junk science, but it took me less than a minute and no funding to prove that she was wrong. It's a very good thing that funding is becoming harder to obtain. And then she launches out into other areas which she's completely unqualified to talk about. Giannini said, however, that we should do all we can to curb the warming. Otherwise, I'm convinced that the ice caps will melt and there will be no going back. 
The French government went through a very long, involved selection process identifying the 13 U.S. scientists they're bringing over. Unfortunately, it appears that none of the people on their selection committee have any skills searching on Google. Well, the United States gain is France's loss, and it's good to see the climate swamp being drained in the U.S. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science for a long time.